What's up guys, welcome back to a somewhat shorter episode this week in which we found a beautiful vine snake that turned out to have a severely misshaped eye. After getting attacked by an army of leeches, we found a cute little cat snake which bit itself, and finally, we found our main target, an absolutely stunning red-headed crate which was way more defensive than normal. Enjoy. Yeah. Alright, so we're about to start herping, we're now in Trang province. We've come to a spot which has been very reliable for us in the past. This is actually the same spot where we filmed the red-headed crate mating video about two years ago. Here with Matthew Hampton from Australia who came to visit, as well as Moon who you already know. And yeah, we're gonna start walking and I have really high hopes because today we've had a lot of rain and now it's just sort of stopping. And we spoke to some people back in the village and they said that for the last few days there has not been so much rain. So. Usually when it's dry for a period and then you get one day of really heavy rain, that's when all the snakes are out, so... Plus this spot is really good from experience, so I'm really hopeful that tonight we're gonna get at least something worthwhile. And yeah, we'll get back to you when we get something. This is just such beautiful habitat. Alright, we haven't even been walking for five minutes yet and we've already got a snake. Nothing too exciting, but still, it's a very big, beautiful individual of oriental vine snake. And you can see him just neon green up in that tree there. Look at the way those raindrops are just hanging off the bottom of him right there. Of her, sorry, this would be a large female. You want to go get him down, Matthew? Yep. All right, go for it. And got her. Awesome. And when they get defensive, you'll see how they keep their tongue permanently extended. I never actually got a solid answer as to why they do this, but my suspicion is that it's to mimic a blade of grass and just help them blend in with vegetation more. Yeah, she is sweet. So that's almost as big as they get? That that would be a large individual. And you can see there again the typical expanding of the scales on the neck. And then that really beautiful checkered pattern becomes visible. And you get actually two or three species of vine snake in this area. And two of them are similarly green to this. But the way you can tell them apart, or one of the way, the easiest ways, is that when they expand, the oriental vine snake has this like checkered defensive pattern and the Malay and green vine snake will have more of a banded pattern between the scales. And what I've just noticed is that her left eye, I didn't see that before, is actually damaged in some way. You can see normally they have those keyhole shaped horizontal pupils like on the left. On the left here, this you can see is what it's supposed to be like. And then on the other side, let me just try to turn her head. You can see that the pupil is severely misshaped. Now that could be a birth defect and it was just not severe enough to cause it any major complications, or it could be an injury. But she's still in really great health and very large, so I don't think it's a big issue for her. Anyway. Alright, so we've still got a lot to walk tonight, so we're not going to waste any time of this prime herping time. Just gonna stick her back up in the tree and continue the search. Beautiful. Right back on the same tree we found her and most likely she will just go right back to sleep here within a few minutes. Oh, and her. apparently she wants to jump. Oh no, she's gonna go back up. And the rain's really picking up so we're gonna pack up and continue. Alright, second snake of the night. I was just walking and I spotted it. And I just saw something moving, and for a moment I didn't really realize what I was even looking at until I, I just saw something moving, but I didn't see what was moving. I guess my eyes are just kind of tired. It's about two or three hours since the last snake. This is a beautiful little cat snake. You can just see him right in there on that branch. Not a very large one yet, but not quite a juvenile either. I would say 
sub-adult, but very beautiful. I think this might actually be a juvenile Benculuensis. Um, the Drapezii and Benculu... Yeah, this is juvenile Benculuensis. They're quite hard to tell apart sometimes. Well, there's a lot of... Or, or I should rather say there's a lot of confusion about if they're even two separate species or not. But I strongly believe that they are. And this one, as an adult, will turn green with cream or very light pinkish bands sometimes. These ones are sometimes a little bit bitey. Um, should be alright though. I will just gently... oh! Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> he didn't like the thought of me touching him. Alright, well he's probably gonna bite the crap out of me. Oh, 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 oh. Get back here. <laughs> Rather get bit than let it get away. Is this a lifer for you, Matt? Yep, sure is. There you go. Wow, this is so Let's small. bring him up onto the road. I'm getting bit by millions of leeches. <laughs> I was walking in a stream bed earlier and, oh, I've got a few more. The leeches were having an absolute field day. Yeah, 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 there's, there's a couple. Yeah, I'll get the rest off later. So here we have beautiful juvenile Boiga benculuensis, or Boiga drapezii as some say, but there's two very distinct color morphs. You get this one, which will turn green. You can already see it's got that green head. And as an adult, it will be pretty fully green on the body and have light banding. Moon is also fighting leeches. <laughs> okay, so these are mildly venomous and probably wouldn't be good to let one chew on you for ages, but I would not by no means consider them a dangerous snake at all. You might get some swelling and whatnot, but... And even that, only if you let it chew on you for an extended period. If you just have a quick bite and release, not much will happen. And. These are very distinct from other Boiga in terms of that they're way more slender. Yeah, that's and, crazy slender. And you can see the, the back of their head is almost squarish. Yep. Other Boigas will be more more oval-shaped heads, whereas these have a real box-shaped head and those huge bulging eyes. Just carefully. I mean, you can see it's just like thinner than my fingers, but already decently long, and you can see that bulge right there. Yep. That is where there's an old meal, but this would already be several days old. Oh, and he took a strike. Found several of these before, but these are always a joy to find again and again. And look at that pattern on the neck. It's just fabulous. Such a sweet little snake. Oh, <laughs> did you see that? He just bit himself thinking it was me. Very, very beautiful snakes. And the, th Ooh. and the thing with these is that if they're wild caught, they're very hard to get started in captivity. From experience from a friend of mine, these will only feed on certain species of Acanthosaura and Calodes. So this is not really a good species in the hobby. Best admired in their natural habitat and released. Oh. I would like to avoid a bite if necessary, if possible. Oh, did you see that big raindrop just land next to him? Alright, so we got our photos. Do you want to just carry him back? And because these are so long and slender, they're just the best climbers. Alright. Let's go find some more on this till now very dead night. Having fun? Yep, I've got about 200. <laughs> That's from getting in there. I bet I've got more again too. This is the problem about some of these places. They're great for herping, but they're also great for leeches. So if we've got any 
leech enthusiast subscribers, consider coming here. Christ. You look cute. Oh my god, guys. We were just walking and I was just thinking, man, I really hope we find something good soon. And I was just saying, now that we found the cat snake, I think this is good luck. We're going to find something soon. Look what is in there. Do you see that bright, chili colored tail? That is exactly what we were hoping to find here. And a big one too. You can see the head right in there. And we didn't bring the snake hook, did we? If you haven't guessed already, this is a large red-headed crate. All right, so we don't have any hooks, but I don't think that's an issue at all, if you're familiar with this channel. So let's go. All right, just keep the light on him. Sometimes when you grab them, they're gonna be quite quick. But usually they're very calm. Oh, he's in beautiful condition too. He must have just shed recently. And it looks like, okay, no, it doesn't have a meal. I thought it might have a meal. Keep the light on him. I don't want him to turn because sometimes they will be defensive when you first catch them. Oh, this one does have a bit more attitude than the previous ones I've caught, which is not very many, so. All right, he's coming right up onto the road on his own. Okay. That's good, I'm just gonna let him go right up there. Okay. Follow him. Have a look at this, guys. This is exactly what we came to find. Wow, look at that. Yes! <laughs> oh, All right, so this is probably one of the most beautiful red-headed crates I've ever seen. Beautiful, I think this, this should be a... Oh, this is a female. Not, I was not expecting to find a female this far from the water because usually this is peak mating season right now so normally they live in rock crevices really near the water and during mating season the males will stray further away from the water in search of new areas that has different females. Is my hair okay? <laughs> <laughs> There's no anti-venom for these, and they are highly venomous, although the bite from one could most likely be treated with Bungarus candidus or Bungarus fasciatus anti-venom, and it would probably be successful. Look at that, he's almost hooding up like a cobra. Do you see that? He's expanding his neck. Yes, ever so slightly. This is very unusual, and you can also see this one's a lot more defensive than any of the other ones I've ever handled. Whoa. See that, he's, I don't know if you can tell on the video, but I can definitely tell that his neck is broader than normal. It's definitely, he's trying to flatten himself out. And we wanted to call it a night before and go home. <laughs> Look at that, look at that. A crate flaring its neck, similar to a cobra, except of course not as wide because they don't have those specialized ribs. But this is, oh my god, this makes all the hours of sweat worth it. All the leech bites. Look at that, look at that, he's literally putting his head up and expanding his neck very slightly. I'm just gonna work with him a little to see if I can get him to calm down a bit. He's very sketchy compared to all of the others I've seen. Only or she, we should keep saying, we should say she, we should be gender appropriate here. <laughs> I really wonder if I can get her to mellow out. All right, well, do you want to have a play with it, Matt? Sounds good. Okay. Just watch out, she'll come back up on you sometimes. Oh, it's rain. Got it. Mm -hmm. You want me to take the light? Yep. Oh, did she just bite the bag? I think she did, yeah. I mean, wow, wait, I just want to get some close-ups of that head. Have a look at this. What a stunning snake. Look at him go. These can be quite quick if they want to.
Now, just as we were about to release it, it seems to be becoming a little bit more workable, but still somewhat untrustworthy, so we're gonna keep it very, we're gonna play it very safe. Just gonna look at it for a few more moments because I don't get to see these every day. And then I'm gonna let it go right back into that same ditch where we found it. Glad it's calmed down a bit now. Becoming way more workable. Um, yeah, but that just goes to show that, I mean, the snakes, they don't really want to do anything to us. I mean, this is like literally one of the most venomous snakes in Thailand, but as you can see, if you're careful and just read their behavior, they, even these, when they're defensive in the beginning, they will quite quickly understand that you're not killing them. It doesn't mean you don't have to be careful, though. But I think that goes without saying. Oh, still, you can, did you see that little twitch? Still very, very aware of what's going on, but becoming much more comfortable being handled. And his head is just resting up against my finger there now. Get a close-up of that. Beautiful little... Oh, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Still gotta be careful. But, becoming way more predictable now than it was in the beginning. Alright. We've had our fun. Let him go. Sounds good. Yeah. Alright, you can just hand the camera back to me. Wait. Alright. Oh, oh, oh. Not so easy doing this one-handed. Let's just go right back to the ditch that we found here. And we will go home and be very, very, very happy people. Just have a look at that absolute gem of a snake. And she now has realized that this trench is not safe from humans. So she is just gonna move off and hide somewhere away from the road for tonight, I guess. And maybe it's good that she learns to avoid the trenches because there's cars around here, so. Oh man, she's beautiful. I don't know if you can get a look at those eyes now, but they have the most beautiful, large, round pupils. Alright, we'll just let her vanish into the underbrush. Tickle, tickle. Oh! <laughs> okay, she's going down into the... This is like all really soft ground. There's going down a little burrow thing. Feeling good? Awesome. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna pack up. Alright, we've just had an extremely successful night, although we didn't find many snakes. I think the snakes that we did find made up for that. We are very tired now. What time is it about? Uh, it's 20 past 2 in the morning. 20 past 2 in the morning. There you go. <laughs> so we're just gonna rush home before the rain hits again. And thank you guys for watching. Peace.